Virtual reality is the future. Have you heard? Everyone's insisting that this is the case. The new immersive experience that's going to create an entirely new narrative medium that will revolutionize movies, TV, video games, storytelling in general, uh, music maybe, exercise, stir-fry cooking perhaps. We are indeed getting the VR hard sell right now. And I see a lot of people jumping on board. I ain't one of them. Not because I don't see the supposed virtues and hypothetically nifty things that could be achieved with it, but because I'm old enough to remember living through the last time this hype machine went through. In that glorious, compared to the last month or so, decade called the 90s. Now, for those of you too young to remember, the 90s were an amorphous moment of civilizational water treading with almost no distinct temporal personality of its own, where relatively few memorable or meaningful things happened on a global pop culture scale until the damn decade was almost over. But one of those cultural footnotes was absolutely the first mainstream coining of VR as a technology we were assured was right around the corner, and a bunch of terrible movies and TV shows tried to cash in on the craze without anyone having fully figured out what virtual reality even was or what it was gonna do. The Lawnmower Man movies gave us a mentally challenged Gardner, transformed into a virtual cyber god. Brain Scan was about a haunted video game. Disclosure was sold as a corporate world erotic legal thriller, but ended up being mostly about virtual reality database filing technology. And Saban's VR Troopers posited that virtual reality would end up being full of monsters from mid-1980s Japanese TV shows. There was also Arcade, a particularly bad episode of The X-Files, and plenty more I'm sure I'm forgetting. Oh, and also Strange Days, but that was actually pretty good, and The Matrix doesn't really count as a VR movie because it's more about downloading your consciousness into and out of a digital space that's real to you, as opposed to a simulation. Same reason Tron doesn't count, my show my rules. Anyway, chances are if you're the sort of person who watches internet videos about bad movies, you've heard of all of those. But one that often gets forgotten is 1995's Virtuosity, which kinda makes sense because it only really uses VR as an excuse to stage what is scenario-wise a Terminator ripoff. <laughs> But also not because you'd think it would be remembered just for starring Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe. Also, it's extremely bizarre, but also extremely not good. Ahem. <clears throat> Movies are weird. <laughs> Now, like many other quintessentially 90s sci-fi movies, Virtuosity has a massively overcomplicated setup for an otherwise simple movie. In the near future, the Los Angeles Police Department is for some reason spending billions of dollars to develop a virtual reality training simulator for the police, which instead of training them in everyday crime and or safety scenarios that city cops might actually encounter on a regular basis, instead involves hunting down an artificially intelligent virtual serial killer played by a still then mostly unknown in the United States Russell Crowe named Sid 6.7, whose consciousness has been created by digitizing and combining the personality of thousands of other famous murderers from Hitler to Manson to, yeah, really. Looks like there's almost 200 different personality structures in this version. The battle raging inside him must be amazing. So I guess the LAPD was concerned that all officers had to be ready to fight Serpentor at some point. Anyway, the project gets unceremoniously shut down in beta because Sid, whose name stands for Sadistic, Intelligent, and Dangerous, has figured out how to hack his own programming and do things he's not supposed to be able to do, like actually murder the convicts they've been using to test the equipment by causing sensory overload. Fortunately for the clearly evil but somehow not clear to anyone else in the movie scientist who invented Sid and still wants to see how much further he can evolve, there's a mad scientist in the same fucking building who's invented some blue nanotech goo that can be used used to 3D print real-world android versions of virtual reality characters. They're supposed to test it out on a virtual sex bot because what else? I want you inside here with me now. I understand you've been trying to incubate a nanotech android. What are you getting Mr. at? Mr. Wallace seems to think that my software is the solution to the problems you've been having. No way. May I suggest we begin by incubating Sheila 3.2? Brilliant. But instead, the bad guy switches out the modules and out pops Sid 6.7 into the real world, where he immediately starts running around Los Angeles killing everybody because he's a video game boss and that's all he knows how to do. <laughs> Gravity. Oh, and dedicated bad movie fans who think this sounds exactly like the Don the Dragon Wilson vehicle Virtual Combat from the same year, yeah, same basic movie. Look, it's still a better use of this premise than Pixels was, and I like that the mechanics of this amazing Cyber Frankenstein future tech are visualized as essentially dropping 1995's idea of a flash drive into a bowl of turquoise fingernail polish. In any case, it's determined that the only guy who can stop Sid is the only test subject player who consistently defeated him in the game. You might think this might lead to some morally complicated anti-hero business since, you know, they've been testing this thing on felons doing hard time, so conceivably their only hope might be someone nearly as bad as Sid himself, but lucky for them, it turns out the best player is Denzel Washington as a decorated ex-cop who's only in jail in the first place for using excessive force against the political terrorist who killed his wife and daughter and is not only a morally righteous, upstanding dude, he's in great shape and has a cyborg arm to even up the odds. <laughs> 
So yeah, it's a low-tech Terminator, right down to the fact that Sid is nigh indestructible since the blue nanotech goo that he's technically made of can regenerate itself by consuming glass, which is novel, I guess. Oh, and the guy who killed Denzel's family also turns out to be one of the psychopaths bumping around in Sid's brain, so it's sort of personal, I guess. You'd think the reason to watch this would be to see Denzel kind of make a fool of himself, because even back then he was already one of the most respected actors working, like this came out the same year as Crimson Tide and he'd already done Mo Betta Blues, Malcolm X, and Philadelphia too, so it's kind of strange that he'd randomly do a cheesy virtual reality movie, but he's just kind of going through the motions here. No, I know. I know. That's how I know, because I know. Anywhere where there can be a whole lot of people that can die, and it can be recorded by the news media live. Instead, the performance to watch is definitely Russell Crowe. He hadn't really popped as a serious dramatic actor in the States yet, so he's way over the top crazy guy mode here, and it's the only place where virtuosity lives up to the weirdness of its premise. He doesn't really get to cut loose like you'd want him to, but the movie comes to life whenever he's doing his What If the Joker Was the T-1000 routine. <laughs> Surprisingly, they don't really do much with the VR angle itself once Sid is out in the real world. There's kind of a twist to the ending in that regard that's amusingly conceived, but the best extended pot is an attempt to visualize the game in live action using minimal CGI glitches, actors who all look the same, playing random NPCs, and objects popping in and out of existence, and they give it all away right at the start of the film. Bottom line, it's not surprising that Virtuosity is a forgotten movie for pretty much everyone involved, but if you're a bad cyberspace slash gaming movie completist, it is certainly one of those.